the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state police, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Protection of the public in its ownership of automobiles and the apprehension of the car thief are two of the chief duties of the highway patrol. At 8.45 on the morning of June 22nd, a luxury red convertible was speeding along State Highway 7. At the same moment, Officer Dorsey, patrolling his beat on regular detail, was approaching the same intersection. The red convertible was exceeding the legal speed limit. Officer Dorsey gave chase. Patrolman Dorsey automatically noted the last three numbers of the fleeing car's license plate. A glance at the list of cars recently reported stolen showed 666 to be a wanted car. 2117 headquarters. Headquarters to 2117. Go ahead. I'm northbound on Highway 7 in pursuit of red convertible. License number on hot sheet FZU666. Stopped on Highway 7, just north of County Road 4. About to investigate red convertible on hot sheet. 10 4? 10 4. Put your hands in the car. They were bringing in that hot red convertible. I've asked for a rundown on the suspect. Ramo, Joe Ramo. Dorsey's bringing him up now. Well, maybe this is going to be the break in the epidemic. $50,000 worth of stolen cars in 20 days. Take a look at this. They've done a good job. June 1st, June 8th, Danville, suburbs, four cars worth 15,000. Helena, six cars. Newburgh, six cars that you couldn't buy for 20,000. These guys go first cabin, nothing but the best. This way, Remo. There's a car registration, his driver's license checks. Sit down. The car you're driving is registered to Mrs. William Hillier of Danville. Yesterday morning at 7 o'clock was reported stolen. Do you want to make a statement? Yeah, she's wrong. The registration says it's her car. And this owner's certificate says it's my car. See her signature? See mine? She sold me the car. Like I tried to tell him. When'd you buy it? Yesterday. Where? Woodstock, upstate, where I live. What are you doing so far away from home? It's a free country. Why were you speeding? I was trying the car out. How'd you pay for it? By check? Cash. Got a receipt? That's my receipt. Hey, that's... All right, my... all right, it's yours. I'm gonna try it out. Have the lab check this. Get me DMV records. This is Matthews. Got a registration here. This is William T. Hillier. Engine number 71, Charles Adam, 407. Is the car been brought in yet? Yes, sir. Check the engine number against the registration. Call me back. Right. Can't you guys get it through your head? I bought this car. See that signature? Can I see you for a moment? Yeah. Think it over. Ramo certificate, and the real thing. It took the lab about 10 seconds flat to prove this one's a phony. Clear-cut difference? The certificate's a phony, all right. So is Ramo. Let's put it to him. Well, did you have a nice chat? Your owner's certificate is a phony. Did you change your engine numbers to him? Ah, you're off your... Matthews. The engine number's checked with the registration. And nothing has been tampered with. Finally waking up. You think if I stole this car, I'd leave the engine numbers the same? It's not done that way, and you know it. Why don't you give the Woodstock Bank a call? What for? That's where I live. That's where I bought the car. You said you paid by cash. Look, I met this Hilliard dame at the bank. I paid her cash. Why don't you call him? Baker. Now, DMV has a dope on those certificates. Give me the Woodstock Bank, too. How's oh, Matthews? Woodstock Bank. There's no doubt about the information at all. Thanks. Your owner's certificate is phony from corner to corner. The real certificate's owned by the Auto Finance Corporation. They hold a mortgage on Mrs. Hilliard's red convertible. You don't know what you're talking about. Hold on, here's Mr. Matthews. Mr. Frazier, the Woodstock Bank. Mr. Frazier, this is Matthews, Highway Patrol. We're holding a Joe Ramo here. Holding Joe Ramo? 
What for? Suspicion of auto theft. Do you know him? Everybody knows Joe Ramo. A diamond in the rough, I guess, but up and coming. A good account, he'll be worth money someday. Car theft. Mr. Matthews, you've made a mistake. Describe this Ramo, will you? Oh, you couldn't miss him. About 35, stocky, rough as a cob. Always looks a little tight in his clothes. And a stick pin in his tie. A diamond horseshoe. If there's no diamond horseshoe, it's not Joe Ramo. Was he in your bank yesterday? Matter of fact, he was. He drew $4,000 to pay for a car. I put the money in Mrs. Hilliard's hand myself. Thanks very much, Mr. Fraser. Mr. Ramo, we owe you an apology. This found out you're a victim, not a thief. That's OK. I get the picture now. And I don't blame you. But you should have seen this redhead who took me. Blue eyes and the prettiest little ears you ever saw. How'd you meet her? Well, she ran an ad in the Woodstock paper. When? Yesterday, I know, because I've been watching the classified. Well, that car was stolen the day before yesterday. That's a good racket. Steal a car downstate, sell it upstate next day for a good price. But how'd they expect to get away with a phony certificate like that? They got your $4,000, didn't they? Yeah, but when I'd file with a motor vehicle, wouldn't they find out? Uh, it takes a couple of weeks to process those things. Anyway, your redhead would be two or 300 miles away by then. Well, we'll do everything we can to get your money back for you, believe me. Sorry if we inconvenience you. My boys will drop you off wherever you want to go. Show them out, baby. I want to get back to Woodstock and get that dame that took me. Now, let us handle this. When you get back home, don't say anything about the car theft, especially to the newspapers. We'll call you. OK. Thanks again. Woodstock, Hilbert, and Lakewood. Richest suburbs in the state. I wonder if they got any cars up there for sale. Get into plain clothes. We'll go up and answer every car for sale ad we can find. simplest way for the car thief to steal a vehicle is provided by the driver who leaves the keys in the ignition. Once the car is in the hands of the thief, the job of the patrol becomes increasingly more difficult. In a matter of hours, the car can be in another section of the state where it is not listed on the hot sheet, and the vehicle assumes a new personality. Advertised there in Lakewood. Uh, do you have a good motel picked out? Only the best. It couldn't be plushier. Swimming pool and air conditioning. I checked and there's vacancy. It's the Colony Motel on the main highway just outside of Lakewood. Fine, fine. Now listen. We'll put the ad in the Lakewood paper. A 1956 model sedan, almost brand new, price 3900 Got it? Well, I've got it, but 3900 Look, Wally, this is the last one in the state. Why don't you sell it for thirty-five and let's get out of here faster? We're not changing the operation now. Make it 3900 If we sell it cheap, it'll look suspicious. Now take this down. Oh, wait just a minute. OK. Make the certificate out to Mrs. Ann, A-N-N, Bradley, 227 Poplar Drive, Cornwell. The license number is HEW 766. The engine number 9D. 881. Got it? 9D881. Got it. It's uh, 1230 now. I'll meet you at uh, Terminal Park at 2 by the lake. Uh, you know where it is? Yeah. That should give me time. All right. <laughs>
been taken care of. Oh, sure. The ad will be in the afternoon papers. Oh, and uh, here's the owner's certificate. Not a bad job. Not bad at all. You seem to be acquiring more ability. That's possible. <laughs> I try, Wally. After all, that's all a girl can do is try. Norma, get back all right? Oh, yeah, she's at the motel now. She had that rainbow character in the palm of her hand all the way. He couldn't make up his mind whether he wanted the car or Norma. <laughs> How's things downstate? Smooth. The people that own the old jalopies are always afraid someone's going to steal their car, but uh, if you look long enough, you can always find someone in a shiny new car with the keys in the ignition. Uh, and here they are. Drive carefully. And don't contact us unless it's absolutely necessary. Right. And here are my keys. Okay, let's go. Nice-looking car. Shouldn't be too hard to sell. It won't be. My bag's in the car. Joseph Ramos' story to be true, but the woman who had swindled him had disappeared. By 12 noon of the same day, Dan Matthews and Patrolman Dorsey had arrived at Lakewood, 30 miles farther north, in order to investigate car for sale advertisements in this area. I could be there in about 15 minutes if that's convenient. Fine, thanks very much. Don't you get anything? Answer three in Hillsborough and four in Greenlawn. None of them fit. I've got one sounds interesting. Mrs. Ann Bradley, Colony Motel, Lakewood. License number HEW 766. Well, that's not on her hot sheet. It could have been stolen last night. She's asking 3,900. That makes it a possibility. You know, I hope she's a redhead with the prettiest pink ears that Ramo's ever seen. California's my state. Just passing through. I'm in the copper mining business. See, I wrecked my car outside of town this morning. I'm so sorry. I'm glad you weren't hurt. Where are you staying? The Pine Tree Motel. You would have to understand one thing, Mr. Daniels. I'm from downstate, and your home is a long way from here. I'm afraid the sale, that is, if you're interested, would have to be for cash. I can have the money at the local bank in an hour. I assume the speedometer hasn't been set back. Of course not. Can you tell 
by just looking at it? Yeah, sometimes you can. Do you own it outright? Of course, it's in my name. Douglas, well, my husband and I were recently separated. The car came to me in the settlement. It's too bad you have to sell it. Well, I wasn't going to. See, I drove all the way up from Cornwall, where our home was, intending to drive to New York. But all of a sudden, it seemed like such a lonely drive. I'm going to fly instead. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Daniels. I'll take it off your hands. I'll have the local bank wire my bank and the money will be there. You have the owner's certificate, of course. Yes. Shall I meet you at the Lakewood Bank? How about 2 o'clock? Thank you very much, Mr. Daniels. Right, Lakewood Bank at 2. To headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. Check registration. Mrs. Ann Bradley, address 227 Poplar Drive, Cornwell. Engine number 9 David 8881. License HEW 766. 10 4? 10 4. She's honest looking. She's passing phony certificates. That's the kind of a name they'd use. I'm going to make a phone call to Cornwell. See if there's a Douglas Bradley there. He's supposed to be her husband. Headquarters to 2150. 2150 to headquarters, go ahead. Penny report on Bradley car. Check of all car theft reports to present time. Does not list license. Henry Edward William 766. 10-4. You see there's a business phone listed for a Doug Bradley? Try it, will you? The car's not stolen. As far as headquarters is concerned, it's not on the hot sheet. You know that address she gave us? She's listed. I called, but there's nobody home. I'm now trying Doug Bradley. Take orders to 2150. Get that, will you? <laughs> 2150 to headquarters. Go ahead. Partial report on Bradley car shows Ann Bradley, 227 Poplar Drive, Cornwell, is registered owner. Car is owned outright by her. 10 4. Mr. Douglas Bradley, please. This is Matthews, Highway Patrol. Say he's in a meeting? See if you can get him out. This is very, very important. Thank you. It's starting to get worse and worse. There's a Doug Bradley, too. Bad news from Baker, too. The car's registered in her name. She owns it outright. Is the engine number checked? He didn't get the dope on it yet. Thanks. I'll hold on. Headquarters to 2150. Go ahead, headquarters. Complete report on engine number 9, Denver, 8881. Registration is correct in all details. Registration to Mrs. Ann Bradley, correct. And four. Yes, that's a car, right? Is she a blonde, about five feet five? That's right. Well, you recently separated. Separated? What are you talking about? You mean you're not legally separated and she's not driving or flying to New York? Listen, my wife's in the Cornwell Hospital with a fractured leg. As of about five minutes ago, we were separated by a distance of five miles and nothing else. Well, Mr. Bradley, the only reason I called is to tell you your wife's car has been stolen. We have a lead on it. We'll call you back. Thanks very much. We hit it. Jackpot. Can we pick her up? No. She'll lead us to the rest of her playmates. I'm going to meet her at the bank at 2 o'clock. You stake out here, room 25. To headquarters. Go ahead, 2150. The Bradley car is hot, but keep it off the hot sheet till further orders. N4. I want an immediate stakeout, room 25, Colony Motel, Lakewood. Have nearest available car, report to Dorsey. 10-4? 10-4. When you're relieved, come down to the bank, stakeout across the street. I'll be inside. Unfortunately, the plain clothes stakeout was too late. While Dan Matthews and Officer Dorsey were checking on the bogus Ann Bradley, the suspect had left to visit her partners in the car theft operation. I told you not to drive around unless you absolutely had to. Hi, Norma. Hi, Ann. I absolutely had to. Our last customer's taking delivery in front of the bank at 2 o'clock, so I just came by to tell you to start packing. That means we're through. I'm glad you had this one. It was beginning to get on my nerves. Listen, sweetie, it's less grief than marrying them, and a lot more money. What does he look like? Well, he's, uh, heavy, strong-looking, square face, Dark suit, gray hat. 
three forty and fifty. His name is Daniels. He's in Copper from California. Said he had an accident with his car this morning as he was coming through town. He's staying at the Pine Tree Motel. Check him. Call the Pine Tree Motel. You know where the phone booth is. Perfect operation. Lift the cars downstate, sell them upstate with brand new owner certificates to match. Do it fast before the Motor Vehicle Bureau has a chance to check on the certificates. Move to the next state and repeat. And it's a lot safer printing owner certificates than money. Easier to pass and to fill in. Nobody'd take a $5,000 check without making sure it was good. Why do you suppose they take these certificates without a second thought? They're looking at the car, I guess. Or at you and Norma. All right. Daniels is staying there. Spoke to the manager. Everything checks. There was a wreck, and he's in copper mining. Yeah, he's clean, I guess. Well, he's getting a clean car, isn't he? Hmm. Clean and piping hot. What time's your date with him? Two o'clock at the bank. Our car gassed up? Full. Well, we haven't got much time. Uh, it won't hurt to keep him waiting a few minutes, make him more anxious. Uh, same procedure at the bank as usual. Matthews and a very nervous bank manager waited. Matthews' hope was that the quarry had not become alarmed and that she would keep their rendezvous. Good luck. Yes, to all of us. She must have caught on. Never mind. Pops. Lock that alley! Right up. Move around here. Almost a perfect operation. I never carry a gun. Thanks, Mrs. Bradley, for bringing your friend along. The redhead with the pretty pink ears. All right, move out. See the highway patrol in action again next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week. <laughs>